and we've been going through COVID now for about five months here in Santa Barbara in our little house and our little street. And uh, all I see of the world is what I'm constantly watching on the news, every news channel I can get, which <laughs> all amounts to about 10 minutes of news a day. But one thing that became apparent was that um, how frustrated it is to remain invisible um, in the in the in the midst of all these radical times, and how clear it is that no one is speaking to us as Chicanas, Chicanex, Indigenous, Latino, Latinx, Latinas. No one is speaking to us as people, not one people, not one Hispanic mass, but as peoples. The many of us that have um, come to gather here under the flag of the United States of America. And all of the differences that we are um, amongst ourselves, those of us that have been here for generations before there was a border and a United States, and those of us who have moved back and forth across those borders for centuries, and those of us who have arrived, and those of us by choice, and those of us in forced migration, each one of us uh, has our own history to the United States in terms of our nation state identities, but also in terms of our indigenous identities. So as I was watching and listening and feeling very invisible, and always, always um, being made to feel as if I was um, not even yesterday's news, but last year's news, um, it, it, it made me want to respond. And I didn't know how except to use the tools that I have and um, I want them to honor myself and those that represent as Chicano artists. Um, we have, in the last 50 years, uh, developed tools, strategies to be present. And I wanted to honor that presence. And one of those tools has been Day of the Dead. Um, the folks before me who are now ancestors brought um, that ceremony to us. They brought it as a way of providing ground, some place where we could stand that we belonged to, remembering ourselves through our ancestors, through that ground. And so I wanted to remember that and remember the original purpose of making place and making ourselves visible so that we could speak to our communities and to the communities that we share this ground with including the indigenous communities who we've always recognized. We've always known the indigenous communities. We have lived amongst them, with them, married, had children, and have always honored the ancestors of those folks who have made this land so generous and, has, and have received us. So I wanted to come back to Day of the Dead, but I wanted to connect it to the need to see ourselves reflected in these radical times, to know that we too are in movement. We too um, are, are not only anxious, but making change. As I look across this uh, state and I look across this country, I see that so many of our young people and our elders are actively engaged, but that's not reflected in the news media the main artery that connects us in these times of COVID. So I wanted to do my small little part and during this time. And um, I'm uh, beginning with how we begin things, which is by lighting a fire. And I've uh, come up with an idea that we're now looking at with the help of my partner, Cherie, of Voz, Vela y Voto which is basically the lighting of a fire in this moment of fire, the season of fire and water that has entered my dreams and I know has entered the, um, through, the, through the dreams and the spirit work of so many people and so many communities. I'm sure that those who have had these dreams and have seen this vision, uh, all are thinkers, all the people that pay attention, that have awakened, because we have to know that in this season, 
to light a fire with intention is to light the fire in reflection and in response to the larger fires that already are in existence. We know that our people lit fires to protect ourselves. We lit fires to let the universe, to let this planet, to let the waters, to let everyone know where we were, where we were as people, what we needed, what part we occupied. And it almost doesn't make sense now because we have, we are, we've occupied as human beings so much space, to some of which we don't belong, and our people are suffering for it. Some of us pushed into spaces that we know we don't belong, but we have no choice. So in the face of these large questions, I just wanted to make one small prayer, the lighting of a flame, the lighting of a small fire that ignites then the purpose of a prayer, a prayer in action, a prayer that means not just something I'm wishing for or hoping for, but that moves me, motivates me, sends me moving in the direction of that prayer in resolving the issues that I have that I have just said I care about. So in looking at the idea of voice then as an action prayer and lighting the vela, we come back to the idea then of how do we enact that simply in this time, in this place, and to me it seemed as, as whether we believe it or we don't believe it, whether it reflects our true politics or not, we have to move things forward. We have to move this particular government that has been assembled, that is doing nothing other than, than eating up the future, our future, eating up our elders, eating up our children, their children's future, seven generations down the line, they are going to be feeling the moment while people get wealthier, while people make profit off of this, we ourselves then are the ones that are providing that. And I wanted them to take it back for a moment and to say that we have to move that administration out of office. Not to say that we accept all of the other standard statements about what this new administration might do for us. The only thing that we can is in the transition, and in the movement, it allows all of us to move forward. It allows all of us to have some voice. It allows all of us to feel that we too, with the action of voting this administration out, and perhaps the Biden-Harris administration might do nothing more but give us the opportunity to breathe, because we need to breathe. We need the opportunity then to make the changes and move those changes forward. We have a lot of work to do. We do. We can't depend on others to do it for us. I keep getting that message. We have to do our own work. We have to all participate. And there's no such thing as, you know, some other day. I feel that at my age, but it also is true of all of us and all our generations. Our children have called us out. They have said to us, move, because they see us as having the power to move. And we say to them, move, because we see them having the energy and the power to move. And so in this way of looking at ourselves from one generation, looking back from grandmother, great-grandmother, looking at the grandchildren, the great-grandchildren that I'm looking at, and knowing that, yes, it's my time to make it possible for them to continue moving forward. We've always been a mobilized people, and we have to continue in that effort. That's what this Day of the Dead reminds me of. It reminds me that in tapping into our ancestors, we're looking at them not as something in the past, but always present because we named them and we keep them alive. We named the spirit of this land and we keep that spirit alive, the spirit of generosity, the spirit of possibility, the spirit that perhaps we can see and remember ourselves as human beings and behave that way toward one another. There's so much to do. In this moment, then, I want to bring it back to lighting the fire and opening up the season of Day of the Dead for ourselves, the way it is now. Thank you.